We're in the shop building of the Lake Superior Railroad Museum at the St. Louis County Depot in downtown Duluth for another behind the scenes video tour. Now, when these drop, it's very important that you share them with as many people as possible because that really helps the museum. You can also subscribe to these too, so that way you never miss one. And we're releasing one, two or three a week going forward into the season. We're out in the shop building because we want to do a episode on our two cabooses that we have in right now. Actually, we did a series on the cabooses all together as a group called Nine Cabooses, which is the number in the collection. And you can link to that at the end of this video right here and then learn more about them. But this gives us a chance to get inside and in depth in what the caboose is all about. And we have two examples here, one from the DM&IR, the C205, and one from the Sioux line, the number one. Now, the reason they're in the shop is because all of our equipment that we use on the North Shore Scenic Railroad comes into the shop before the start of the season. And that gives our volunteers and shop crew a chance to go through it from stem to stern and make all the safety adjustments and improvements that need to be done and make sure that the car is roadworthy for the season up ahead. These are two very historic cabooses and both of them have great stories about them because a caboose was an institution in the railroad industry. The first one started to appear in about the 1850s and those were called bopper cabooses. They were just a little hut on two trucks and the ride was horrible, there was no suspension, and there's a reason that the guys called them crummies, for a reason. But then the caboose evolved, and it became the period at the end of a sentence that says, this is a train. And it was used by the conductor and brakeman as their mobile office. This is where the conductor did all the paperwork. This is where the brakeman could get out of the elements if it were raining or snowing, and it became a much safer ride, especially as the caboose evolved and became a better piece of equipment. But it was that ride that also led to their demise. So safety started the caboose and safety concerns put an end to the caboose as well. We've got two great stories here. So let's start with, oh, I don't know, number one on the Sioux line. Come aboard. In 1966, the Sioux line railway was looking to replace some of its older wooden coaches with brand new metal coaches. And from the International Car Corporation, they ordered 15 of these metal cabooses to replace other cabooses that actually dated back to the 1890s. Of course, metal being a lot better than wood for safety's sake, that's why they wanted these 15 cabooses. Of these 15 cabooses, this was the first one. So it's the first all steel caboose on the Sioux Line Railway. And that why, is why it was preserved for the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. Now, it's a very interesting caboose because it's an extended cab version which means the cupola, where we are right now, which is the high point of a railroad caboose and its functionality, up here you can watch the entire train in front of you. And you can lean out to see along the side of the train. Henceforth, an extended vision cupola for better visibility. Now, the first ever extended vision cupola was built by the International Car Corporation in 1952. And guess who bought it? our own Duluth Wasabi and Iron Range Railway. The first one from International Car Corporation is on display in Proctor with one of the huge Mallee steam locomotives. But this was a great invention. And this is why these cabooses were so popular because you had better visibility. Riding in a caboose though was dangerous for two reasons. One is you could fall down there in the case of a jolt or a bump, but slack action where the train, like an accordion, expands and contracts as it speeds up and slows down. Well, if you've got a mile long train, that slack action back here can throw you clear across the room. And that was dangerous. And technology also, as I'll show you at the end of this episode, made the caboose obsolete. An extended cab becomes a bay window coach as we go to our DM&IR 205. The DM&IR C205 was also an International Car Corporation caboose and it had an original cupola on the top and was part of that extended vision cab that we talked about earlier. But it was modified in 1975 into what we call a bay window caboose. Now, some of the crews liked this better because out of that bay window, you could see more along the side of the train. You couldn't, however, see along the top of the train. And there's a reason that they changed it. And if you come inside, I'll tell you all about it. Originally, this had an extended vision cupola, but in 1975, the DM&IR had to make some changes in their operation. 
and they made this bay window version of the same caboose instead. And the reason for that was they had made some expansions at the Thunderbird mine at Eveleth Taconite on Minnesota's glorious Iron Range. Thunderbird North and Thunderbird South had loadout pockets, but those loadout pockets were low, and that cupola wouldn't pass underneath them. That's where they load the taconite into the train cars. So they had to build a special caboose for these new loadout pockets in Eveleth. And that's why they got the bay window coach, because of course you didn't have the cupola anymore and you could look out the train like this. In 1975, that's when they made the changes to this particular caboose. So it could go from the mine at Eveleth to the processing plant at Forbes with raw taconite. Interestingly enough, the Thunderbird mine was named Thunderbird. The plant was named Fairlane. Can you guess who owned Eveleth Taconite? You're right, the Ford Motor Company. Anyway, this caboose was saved and given to the North Shore Scenic Railroad after it went to Silver Bay's mining company, North Shore Mining, up the coast of Lake Superior. And there they were going to use it as a shove platform on their tailing trains, but they never got around to that. So instead, the Masabi Road Historical Society bought it and made it as a donation to the Lake Superior Railroad Museum. So we certainly thank the MRHS for their generosity in saving this particular piece of Masabi Road artifact. Now, it's being worked on, as you can see, it's kind of a mess in here, but two of our great volunteers, Paul Maplethorpe and Fred Lanis, have adopted this coach and put some of the time and money into rehabbing it and bringing it back into its wonderful glory back when it was on the regular railroad. The work that Fred and Paul are doing to this coach is putting it into service again with a generator of its own. They've redone all the lighting inside here and they've added these flashing lights outside so that the car is safer when it's on the back of a train. So we want to really thank Paul and Fred for saving this coach. But interestingly enough, it was Fred that put an end to the cabooses. Fred is also F-R-E-D for flashing rear end device. It was an electrical connection between the back of the train and a display panel in the cab of the locomotive. And that way, it replaced what these guys would do in the caboose, which is keep an eye on the air brake system, make sure that the train hasn't broken apart and that everything is running smoothly. The flashing rear end device put an end to the cabooses. Now, the Sioux caboose is kind of interesting because if you ever wanted to be a conductor or brakeman, you can ride in this particular one right here. On the North Shore Scenic Railroad, we have our caboose cruise package, which allows you to rent this caboose with you and a few of your friends, ride up in the cupola, have uh, maybe some beverages while you track along on the North Shore Scenic Railroad. You can make special arrangements for this. Start at our website, DuluthTrains.com. And one other thing that people always ask is, why Sioux? What is S-O-O? -O? Well, the original name of this railroad, this is kind of like a nickname, is the Minneapolis St. Paul and Sioux St. Marie. And it was originally used to haul grain and finished mill products from the mill city of Minneapolis to a port on the Sault Ste. Marie, which could bypass Chicago because the owners of the grain milling companies in Minneapolis thought the railroads were taking advantage of them with overcharging on their rates. So they built their own railroad, the Minneapolis, St. Paul and Sioux St. Marie. We're going to put up that link right now so you can see some more of the cabooses in our collection. In the meantime, remember to subscribe to these, share them as often as you can, and as always, let's take care of each other.